Mike Piazza and Pedro Martinez were teammates to start their pro careers and ended up teammates again near the end. In between, they had beef. Messy, public, slightly violent beef. And it wasn't just the two of them. In the late 80s, the Los Angeles Dodgers opened MLB's first ever academy in the Dominican Republic, Campo Las Palmas. There they developed their prized Dominican pitching prospect, a teenager named Ramon Martinez, as well as a large roster of campers that included his younger, shorter, and less heralded brother Pedro, and, oddly, an American kid. That was Mike Piazza, whose multi-millionaire father had called in favors from his old friend, Dodgers manager Tommy Lasorda, to get his unscouted son picked in the 62nd round of the MLB draft. A stipulation of Piazza's LA contract was that he learned to play catcher, and that's what he tried to do at Las Palmas, despite not fitting in. I didn't speak any Spanish, and all the kids were all Latin. He caught for pitchers like the Martinez brothers for six weeks until he claimed he had food poisoning, went home for Christmas, and didn't return. If you've ever been to summer camp before, you've met that kid. Or you've been that kid. Ramon Martinez soon became a star in the majors, while the younger Pedro and Piazza rose up through the minors. By 1993, Pedro had joined Ramon on the Dodger pitching staff, albeit in a lesser role, and Piazza was their catcher. His catching was, by all accounts, including this one from Pedro's autobiography, pretty bad. But Piazza was such a powerful hitter that it didn't matter. After the 93 season, the Dodgers traded Pedro to Montreal for Delano de Shields. Bad, bad trade. While Pedro blossomed as a starter for the Expos, Ramon and Piazza remained a battery in LA. Ramon complained some about his catcher's defense, but Piazza hit brilliantly enough to become a perennial all-star. In 94, when Pedro faced his old team for the first time, Piazza homered off him. In 95, Ramon pitched his only career no-hitter, and Piazza caught it. In July 96, Piazza caught Pedro for the sixth inning of their first All-Star game together. A month later, Ramon and Pedro did something the extremely close brothers had always dreaded, pitch against one another. Ramon got the 2-1 victory thanks to back-to-back -back homers from Piazza and Eric Caros. Pedro had, by this point, far surpassed his older brother, and before the 1998 season, he signed a six-year, $75 million deal with the Boston Red Sox, the biggest contract in MLB history, but not for long. The beef's almost ready to come out of the oven. Can you smell it? So March of 1998 was a weird, moody time for Mike Piazza and the Dodgers. Piazza was entering the final year of his contract and expecting a huge extension that the Dodgers kept putting off. In fact, he was eyeing the biggest deal in baseball history. Pedro Martinez, who came to visit Ramon at spring training, heard rumors that Piazza said the following about Pedro's record-setting deal. If that little shit got all that money, what would they have to pay me? Meanwhile, Ramon got into a heated war with the New York Mets. He hit a couple Mets batters in a Florida spring training game, and New York pitcher Brian Bohannon retaliated by plunking him right back. Dodgers manager Bill Russell pledged that Martinez would not forget this, which read like a warning. But a rotator cuff injury ended Ramon's season just a few months later. His career took a downturn just before he had an opportunity to face the Mets again. Any revenge would have to come by proxy. And it did! By the time the regular season started, Piazza and the Dodgers still hadn't figured out an extension. He got booed a bit at home, then called off contract negotiations entirely. A month later, the Dodgers traded their disgruntled star to the Marlins. Ramon bid him farewell with a final passive-aggressive remark about his catching. The Marlins had no intention of keeping Piazza. After a week in Florida, Piazza had been traded again to the Mets who just a few days later had interleague play scheduled against Pedro's Red Sox. Pedro had by this point developed a bit of a reputation for throwing inside and provoking conflict. And on June 5th, 1998, Pedro Martinez stared down from the mound at Mike Piazza. There was one out in the first and a runner on second. This Mets team had wronged his brother. This hitter at the plate wasn't on great terms with Ramon either and had badmouthed Pedro's contract. So he hit him right in the hand. Not hard enough to break the hand, but Piazza was hurt to the point that he had to leave the game. Pedro now freely admits the beating was intentional. I hated walking batters and was not going to waste one on Piazza. There just had to be a better way to get that little shit to first base. Hmm, Eureka! I uncorked a fastball that hit his left hand. But at the time, 
Pedro played innocent and blamed Piazza, no friend of his, for diving at a pitch inside. But Piazza and Mets manager Bobby Valentine both insinuated Martinez had meant to do it. Martinez, who again did mean to do it whether or not he was saying so, went off. Piazza responded with a public shot at Martinez's record contract, and Martinez came right back at Piazza's rich upbringing. Speaking of money and contracts, Piazza did indeed break Martinez's salary record in October of 98. The Mets came through with the extension he'd wanted, 91 million over seven years. But separated by AL and NL, there was hardly more opportunity for Piazza and Martinez to clash physically. Pedro faced Piazza just once more as a Red Sox, and it was an uneventful occasion, mostly noteworthy because both men were returning from injury. Piazza's injury, by the way, was the concussion he suffered when Roger Clemens beamed him in the head. And Clemens got another shot at him too, without any retaliation. Piazza wasn't done getting plunked though. Another Dominican Dodgers pitcher, Guillermo Mota, drilled him in the back during a spring training game in March of 2002. Piazza left the game but waited in the dugout for Moda to walk by, then grabbed him and got to shoving. One year later, Moda did it again, and this time Piazza went ballistic, dropped his bat and helmet, and chased Moda off the mound, igniting a brawl. He then went looking for Moda in the Dodgers clubhouse after the game. After watching Piazza war with his countrymen, Pedro couldn't resist throwing darts. Then, a year and a half later, this happened. Both players vowed to put the bad blood behind them. Martinez said they were family now. Piazza said he'd be Pedro's number one supporter. And once again, they were a tandem, albeit with diminishing frequency and productivity. They'd separate again, but the beef didn't return unless you count Piazza homering twice off Pedro in their last ever meeting. And they'd retire maybe not as friends, but at least on friendly terms. In his 2016 Hall of Fame induction speech, Piazza gave a shout out to Pedro, who'd been inducted the year prior. Tommy then sent me down to the Dominican uh, camp of the Dodgers Campo Las Palmas in the Dominican Republic to pick up valuable experience and communicate with Spanish-speaking pitchers. One happens to be here behind me, Pedro Martinez. Reta Corva Cambia. That said, both Hall of Famers wrote memoirs after they retired, and both shed light on the beef. That goofy Spanish you just heard Piazza speaking is interesting in the context of his book. He argues that MLB shouldn't cater to Spanish-speaking players with interpreters and other special considerations, that the onus isn't on American players to learn Spanish, it's on the Latin players to learn English. This clearly ties into another Piazza assertion, that during his career, there was some kind of weird Hispanic conspiracy against him, almost like a secret brotherhood, a Latin mafia type of thing. Pedro's book doesn't talk about any conspiracy against Piazza, he just mentions repeatedly that Piazza was a mediocre defensive catcher, which caused the initial problems between him and Ramon, something Piazza acknowledges in his own book. Martinez kinda insinuates Piazza may have been a steroid user, but also reflects on how hard a worker he was back at Las Palmas. Piazza says Martinez was a little prick when he joined the Dodgers, but says he'd give him a hug now if he saw him. And I think all of the above, combined in the right proportions at exactly the right time, made this beef happen. Mike Piazza was the rich American kid at the camp the Martinez brothers attended in their home country. He was the young hotshot who's catching frustrated Ramon and who supposedly belittled Pedro in pursuit of a record-breaking contract. Pedro was an extremely loyal little brother who didn't forget a grudge and had no qualms about attacking his rivals, on the mound or off it. They were fellow campers, then pro teammates, then opponents at a crucial juncture, and through it all, these two Hall of Famers built a messy, far-ranging web of beef. A beef web. Mmm boy, what a tasty beef. If you want another serving that features Pedro Martinez, check out this episode of Beef History Between the Yankees and the Red Sox, or check out this other SB Nation video. And don't forget to subscribe.